Hello again, everyone. It is Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. I'm John Kosar of Asbury Research and Asbury Investment Management, and this is your Daily Five. These are my five most important charts and data series for the upcoming one to several weeks that I think are going to be the most important to watch and the most influential on future stock market direction. Number one, know your levels. Tactical support is 2 to 3% below the market. So here we have a chart of the S&P 500 starting in January, along with the 200-day and the 50-day moving averages in orange and blue. Those are generally seen by the market as the major and the minor trend or surrogates for those, certainly. Um, so the first takeaway here uh, is something that I've been talking about um, for the past several months um, here in your daily five. And I recently was on a panel with uh, two other analysts and I showed the same chart. As of July the 19th, which was just a couple of days ago, uh, the S&P 500 has tested the 50 day moving average seven times. Um, there are other support levels that I've been drawing in. You can see some of these here that happened to dovetail with the 50-day moving average. There's also a trend line from October of last year that has you know, been dovetailing with the trend line all the way up. But this is unique um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, you usually don't see this buy the dip kind of impulse by investors you know, to be so strong. You can set your watch by it. The second thing is while this has been happening, we've been seeing a lot of weakness um, in traditional market leaders. So a lot of this by the dip has kind of happened, um, I think, um, really by the S&P itself. You just haven't had the strength in the typical market leading indexes. We're going to look at those in just a minute. Um, the last time I was here on uh, Your Daily Five, it was June the 17th. It was one day right before we made this bottom number six. And I had mentioned that the Asbury 6, which is our internal tactical metric that tells us when the market is internally strong or weak, I mentioned that that was positive and that the risk reward from down here was very, was very good if we were to drop into this support. Well, we dropped into it the very next day. Um, we actually had a low of 4164, uh, which was right into our support zone, and the market subsequently rose by, uh, or the S&P 500 rather, rose by 228 points, or 5.5% into the 7.13 or July 13th high, which I'm pointing to. So just a few days after that, we're right back down there again, Pavlovian kind of by the dip thing, and we're back up. Um, so again, this support is uh, at 4246. Um, actually, 4289 is where I would say that this begins on the July 8 minor low here. It goes down to 4238, and that is 2 to 3% underneath the market. As long as we stay up above that, the tactical uptrend in the S&P 500, which engaged back in November of last year, is still intact. Number two. Market internals, the Asbury 6 remains positive. Uh, those who uh, either know me from Asbury Research or from your Daily Five probably heard me talk about this a lot. This is our own in-house model, and we took six different indicators that, and we tested them to see which indicators worked best with each other. What do I mean by that? There is no perfect indicator. There's always an indicator that is giving you a false signal. If you rely on one indicator, uh, in my view, you're not going to do well in the markets. You need a, a group of them that tend to offset each other. Um, so when one or two are giving you bad signals, you get positive from the others. So that's what the Esbury 6 is. The Esbury 6 um, has been on a positive reading since June the 22nd, and you can see right now four of the six are positive, and these are the dates that they all went positive. Only one of these, by the way, um, has to do with the price of an index. Uh, this is a rate of change in the S&P 500. The other five, purposefully, are not based on price, and this is simply because of the day-to-day -day volatility in the S&P 500 now. I think uh, the last thing I've read uh, was that algos, you know, 
Computer trades are about 80% of the daily volume uh, in the S&P 500. This is why we're getting the, you, you know, you wake up in the morning, the S&P is down 30, it closes up 30, and the next day it's down 50 again. So we're looking at stuff like corporate bond spreads and investor asset flows and volume and breadth to try to get away from chasing the tail of the market and look more in its internals. What kind of health? So right now the health is good and we're coming off of that support level. Asset flows are also at a tactical decision point. Uh, we spend a lot of time looking at asset flows of ETFs to try to see what the conviction is on a move. Volume shows urgency, um, asset flows show conviction. So what we're gonna look at today is the total net assets invested in the queues. You can see, uh, Right now, the queues are up above uh, the total net assets in the queues, which track the NDX or the NASDAQ 100, by the way, that's the big cap index. You can see they've been up above their 21 day moving average. Why is 21 days important? Because that's a business month and that's Asbury Research's tactical decision, tactical um, time frame. So you can see they've been up above um, the 21 days since May the 24th, moving my mouse pretty close to that bottom. And in that time, um, the uh, NDX has risen by 11%. If you look, uh, the last time that it was underneath the 21 day, which indicated monthly contraction, that was from April 30th to May 21st. And the NDX dropped by as much as 6% then. So we're always watching this for an indication of what the conviction of the market is. Well, you could see we're at a tactical decision point right now. We're sitting right on that 21 day moving average. So what does that mean? That dovetails with everything else we see. We've just come off of a test of support a couple of days ago and the, and the Asbury 6 are positive. So this tells us that this low right here a couple of days ago in the NDX is really important. It's either the start of the next leg higher or if this fails and we go below the 21 day, then we could be looking at the start of another correction. So the first three that I've showed you today all indicate that this is an inflection point, a tactical inflection point for the market, um, and so far it's positive. Follow the leaders. This is what I was getting at when I was talking to you about the buy the, buy the dip urge in the S&P 500 was atypically taking place without a lot of leadership from the typical places. The typical places for leadership during a healthy bull market are semiconductors, technology, and small cap stocks. Um, all three of those have been struggling since about February. So here's the SOX index. This is a Philex Semiconductor Index. It's been trying to get above and stay above. It's, it's middle of February high at 32.69 ever since then. And in the meantime, here's the relative performance daily uh, from SOX versus SPY, which is the ETF, of course, that tracks the S&P 500. And now it's 63 day moving average. Why 63 days? Because that is a business quarter and that is Esbury Research's strategic time period. So you can see with few exceptions, um, it's been underneath here, really. It's been um, in a strategic trend of relative underperformance since the middle of February. And now we're just kind of drifting sideways. So I think this is important considering where we are. If the market's going to move higher and make a new leg higher into the fall, we need some leadership. Um, we're not getting it from tech right now. Tech is kind of faded. We're not certainly not getting it from small cap. So if we can get back above 32.69 and move and stay in a strategic trend of outperformance versus SPY, this is going to have the legs to go higher. If it does not, if we cannot um, get and stay up above 32.69 and we continue to underperform, the likelihood that we have a corrective decline between now and the end of September are very good. Now, why do I say the end of September? Because seasonality um, is very weak through September. Seasonality is not something that I would ever make a trade on. However, it provides us with either a headwind if it's negative or a tailwind if it's positive. And right now it's negative. This is a quarterly 
for the third quarter, a seasonality pattern for the S&P 500 based on data going back to 1957, which is when the S&P 500 evolved into its current state, you know, the index's current state. Um, you can see the first two weeks of July are heads and shoulders above everything else, the strongest. And then we move into weakness through the end of the through the end of the quarter, and it really escalates in that final 13th week. So this is another important thing. Uh, you, normally, seasonality is, is something that's going to be tertiary for me. But right now, considering we're right on this inflection point and, um, you know, the cues, um, you know, the cues need an influx of money to keep them afloat and to help to keep the market afloat. I think the seasonality pattern could provide a headwind um, for the market, meaning that whatever correction we might get here, it could be bigger just because we have you know seasonality kind of in our face now between now and September. So there you have it. There's your daily five. If you like the research, please visit us at www.asburyresearch.com and sign up for a free bi-weekly uh, market update that tells you a little bit more about what we're doing here at Asbury. Um, thanks for watching, and we will see you at the next one. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.